the class is in memory of Gerard Orchen. You know, sometimes when we start to think about our relationship, when it got, when it went so, when, when things do, what was the turning point? Friendships, marriages, and things like this, nations. What was the turning point? In the parsha of this week, we have a turning point. The first half of the parsha is beautiful. They continue to talk about the inauguration of the temple. Then they speak about the second Passover that the Jewish people did, the first Pesach in the desert. It was a year after they left Egypt. The first Pesach they did in the desert, it was a lot of excitement. The Passover lamb. And then there were a group of Jews who did not have a chance to do the Passover lamb because they were impure. And they came to Moses and complained why we should be losing out. And Moses looked like, don't found it. What kind of a question is that? Why we lose out? If you didn't, if you didn't fast Yom Kippur for whatever reason, when you're going to come to the rabbi and say, I want to do it next week, you didn't do it, you didn't do it, it's over. They came and asked to do something a Passover later. He turned to God, God told him, yes, there is another second chance. It's never too late. Amazing. After that, we read about the traveling, how the Jews used to travel in the desert by the clouds of glory. If the clouds moved, the Jews moved with them. If the clouds landed, they just know that this is the place to, to camp. They put together the old temple, put together their own tents, some places they, they were, they were uh, camping for 18 years in one place, and another place was overnight. Can you imagine they put the whole temple together? They put their own tent, they're sitting down to take a coffee. Somebody <laughs> also says, you know, the cloud is moving. Oy, vey. <laughs> but it's going by God, not by them. They don't decide when to move. God is giving the direction. God is doing everything. It's amazing. Then we read about uh, Moses is uh, turning to his father-in-law, Jethro, and he tells them, you know, we are going to the land of Israel. God spoke good about Israel. At that point, they were about to leave within 11 days to be in the land of Israel. They were going to Israel. They were finally moving from Mount Sinai. They were at Mount Sinai almost a year. Nobody wanted to move. It was comfortable. It was good. Mana next to God. Mount Sinai, King God, uh, Moses teaches them Torah. Life was very good. It's like you, you send your, you know, your, your child is in your house, in your house, and one, one day you tell them, boy, you better rent an apartment. <laughs> That's what God told the Jewish people. No? <laughs> and Moses turns to his father-in-law and he tells them, you know, God is maybe you want to join us. He says, no, I'm going back home. I want to convert my family. And then it's written a line that we say every time when we open the ark. Then when the ark used to travel, Moses said, let God destroy all the enemies of the Jewish people, basically. And the next line, it's like you're coming from a different reality, from a different universe. The Jewish people complained. Mm. There is one complaint, then they complain that they are sick and tired of the manna, they miss the meat that they used to eat in Egypt, the, the fish that they used to eat in Egypt, they want meat, manna, it's boring manna, it's boring, we need some excitement in life, we need meat, they wanted steaks, and from this point it's getting only like this. And Moses complains to God, he says, God, I can't take it anymore what I gave birth to the Jewish people. Why you punish me with the Jews? Why I have to be the leader? I can take it. I need helpers. God, God offers them helpers. And from this, it's only going worse. Then the next week's parsha is about the spies, right? Yeah. Uh, the spies sent Shlach, the spies, Moses sent 12 spies to the land of Israel. And they, and, they, and they came back and they said, it's not a good land, it's scary to go there. And they, God punished them. God said, okay, you don't want to go to the land of Israel? Stay here. And then there we got the decree to stay 40 years in the desert. It was next, it's next expansion, all year. Then it's the story of Korah. It just gets worse and worse and worse. 
what happened? It was such an optimistic beginning of the Parsha. Everything was so amazing at Mount Sinai. And they all were excited going to Israel. They were buying new suits, moving the Peklach, organizing and buying new suitcases, and planning the itinerary. We're going there, we're going to Mesada, then we'll go to, to the Tetzi, Sea, then we'll go to Elat. And in one minute, everything changed. One hand. I remember once somebody wrote a commentary, I don't know from where he took it, but it's very interesting. Moses turned to his father-in-law and he told them, join us. We are going to Israel. God has spoken good about the Jewish people. We will take care of you. Come with us. And Jethro said, I'm going home. No, the Jews are sitting in the back and they said to themselves, you know, if Jethro, if the land is the land flowing with milk and honey, as Moses tells us from day one, from the days of Egypt, and it's going to be an amazing place and an amazing journey, why is Jethro not joining the crowd? What is he know, what Jethro knows that we don't? Obviously, it's not so simple. And the moment Jethro said, I'm not going, all the doubt began. They started to complain, and another complain, and another complain, and finally came out the truth. We don't want to go to Israel. Took a few complaints, but eventually came out. You know, it's like people start to complain about when they hey, then they come for me. See, then finally comes out the real truth while complaining. Because he put the doubt. Will we see such a story? We learned that from the story of the Amalekites. When the Jewish people left Egypt, the whole world, it was after the splitting of the sea, the world was shocked by the miracles that the Jewish people had. Came Amalek and waged a war against Israel. Fine. He lost the war. He fought them, Joshua, Moses and Joshua with an army. They beat them up. But you know what happened? Fighting Israel was not such an absolute no. Well, we can do it. The Amalekites put a doubt in the mind and hearts of people. It's not so bad. Why, the, why the, this doubt came? Because it was a doubt within the Jewish people. The Jewish people doubted before the story of, of Amalek. It's written that the Jewish people were doubting if God is among them. Ayesh Hashem Bekirbein is God among us. The next line is the war of the Amalekites. The doubts, that's the problem. And you start to say, maybe not. You know, a group of people comes together. Let's do, let's volunteer. Let's start this campaign. Let's build the synagogue. Let's help Mr. Joe is in back in bad trouble. And everybody's excited. And then somebody comes up and he says, you know what? I don't think he's so poor. I don't think we need a synagogue so badly. When I came to Solon, there was a there was a councilman who told me. He talked to him about building a synagogue. He told me we don't need there's no need for a synagogue and so on. The mayor actually told me a while later at that time, 28 years ago almost, told me what's wrong with the Jews in this community? Why they don't build a synagogue? He was not Jewish. The Jew told me, oh, we need a singing song, the synagogue's all over, we need a singing song. You know, my my luck was you know, it came out with a book not long ago. It's called Plan B. Somebody wrote a book, a very famous person wrote a book. It's called Plan B. You know, when there is Plan B, Plan A doesn't work out. When there is no Plan B, Plan A works out. I did not have Plan B. I wanted him to go to my father's business. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I came here. The Rebbe said me, gave me a blessing and is a, is a approval for me to come to Solon. And we're going to make it by hook by crook. And that's 
that's what the problem is. When we start to say, oh, maybe, maybe something is a problem. If the Jews have the, would have the faith that if Moses takes them, let's go, won't be any problem. They would enter the land of Israel, it would be easy. We, just like the spilling of the sea. Right before the spilling of the sea, it's written, and the Jewish people, by Aminu Ba'ashem, over Moshe Avdo, they, they believed in Moses, in God, and in Moses' his servant. If they would have the same faith, wouldn't be questions. The moment it started to be, oh, maybe no, nah, no, nah, 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 that was over. And if anybody wants to be successful in something, he has to set his mind on it, go, and Hashem will help you. The moment you start to question yourself, oh, maybe it's time. If you are not sure, you want that to be sure. You have to be sure about it. And that's what Judaism, that's what means learning Torah gives us. The, the clarity, the surety that this is it. There's no two ways about it. There's no maybe. This is an opinion, then we have another opinion, then we have a third way to look of it. There's no third way to look of it. There is one way to look of it. There is Jews, there is the Torah, there is the Torah's way to look of it, and this is it, and with this go. These people survived throughout history. That's what you are sitting around the table, is because our parents and grandparents did not have a plan B. They knew there is plan A to be Jewish, there is no plan B. No way to run away from it, no way to change it, no way to, to, to look for another way of life. There is only plan A. That's what made it.